Samuel, the vicar of the parish, and I love the Lord so much, for he is my Savior. I really introduce my wife. I assume that you know her. Can I introduce her to you? Just in case there are visitors. Because at times I say, for those who are visitors, I am, but I have a wife. Please stand and uh, wave at the people. Yes. That's the wife of the pastor. She's called Christine, and we are blessed with four children. So I'm talking about unfailing presence. That's all thing. Uh, mainly drawn from Genesis 28, 10 to 15, and uh, doing some parallels from uh, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Now, a question may, uh, that is likely to arise anytime in your, in your life is who is present? Who is present? That question arises depending with the need at heart. Probably this morning you asked that question, who is present? Who can I take as my fallback when things seem not to work? Who can I call when I'm so much in need? Who will come for me? And this may range from the neighbor you have to those of you who have parents, are the parents, to anyone that probably you could call, could be things financial, maybe a financial institution could come in handy. But probably you know there are times that uh, that what you try doesn't work. So the question is who is present. Jacob uh, was blessed by his father. Many times uh, we have preached that, uh, that probably he conned his brother's blessing. But I don't think that is the case. God had already ordered that he will bless Jacob and not Esau. And Jacob, receiving that blessing, also, on the contrary, became a beginning of trouble. Therefore, at one point, he must have asked this question, who is present? He stood in the presence of three characters. One, the mother, Rebecca. Rebecca was a caring, a loving mother, but, uh, but as caring and loving, of course, and also discerning, discerning in the sense that he is the one who discerned that his uh, older, older son, Esau, had uh, intimated to kill Jacob, and that was to happen immediately after the death of the father. So she was a discerning, caring mother and loving. And in that presence, Jacob stood. But Rebecca was, had limitation. She had limitation. She could not be able to deliver or help Jacob, maybe from a would be killer who was Cain. The other, the other person who stood before him, or the other presence, was that of the aging father, Jacob. Now, the Bible at this point describes Jacob as aging and dying. Now, he did have much to do, other than just conveying the blessing that he did. He had nothing uh, much to offer. So, again, a very key presence of a father, but a father with, with limitation. The other presence was the presence of Esau, a very toxic presence. This uh, man in the mind and heart, at this time he was a murderer, because he had a, uh, a very, very deep-rooted hate 
against his brother Jacob. And this hate would read would sorry would lead to killing. So three presences that were not sufficient for this moment. Have you been to a moment and you ask who is present? When you turn to those who look helpful, they are not able to offer that help. Let me remind you, there is a fourth presence. And that fourth presence is a presence that I'm calling the unfailing presence, the presence of God. Now, Psalm 46, it was read to us, it described him or his as an ever-present help. Amen. Ever-present. That is the presence I'm talking about. Now, a tip-off just in time happened uh, to Jacob. Uh, and the question may arise, how did Rebekah get information of Esau's intent to kill Jacob and prompted his son Jacob uh, to actually take off? Now, we may think that Rebekah was a genius. She wasn't. It only happened that Jacob had the favor of God and he stood in the presence of him who favors. So when the worst comes, he, he, God prompted Rebekah and she overheard, she got a tip off of what Esau uh, intended to do and quickened his son Jacob about it. That's the amazing thing about being in the presence of God. God will not speak everything. He will at times leave you to draw from the help that he has offered, be it a neighbor, be it that other person. It's good to know how to live with people. God uses people to help you, isn't it? There is, some, there is a song that I love so much, sung in my mother tongue, that says, uh, bless people, because whatever you get comes through people. The clothes you wear, have done having but having been done by a person isn't it the seat you have you are already sitting on right now has already uh, been made by someone someone comes into your life for whatever happens around you to to actually happen the way it happens those people you may not know them so that person sings and says then bless people bless people in all ways and don't speak bad things about people speak good things about people. But then we are seeing that that presence, that existence of people, that presence of people around you, time may come and they will not be of help. There is a fourth presence. Hallelujah. Now that fourth presence has to be activated. If you have it activated, you will realize it will come and it will help you greatly. So it happened for Jacob. He prompted Rebekah to know that the brother who thought that he, uh, uh, he, he will get the blessing, who, who felt entitled to blessings, and he never got them, that brother wanted to kill you. So God prompted someone so that uh, Jacob can make an escape. So he makes an escape. And it was a long journey. And the Bible says that the night fell, the darkness fell, and he couldn't move anymore. And therefore, this young man, the Bible may not be very descriptive, but in your imagination, what do you expect? Leave alone a young man, even, even I and you. Probably if you found yourself somewhere in the night, you have no light that can help you uh, move on. Everything is darkness. Agree with me, the first thing, you'd be so fearful. You'd feel emptiness. You would feel alone. You would treble. This boy must have trebled in the fall of darkness. And, but then, there was presence. Hallelujah. There was presence. I connect this with Psalm 127. There is a verse we normally say when we read this verse, that it is in vain for you to rise up early to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved even when they sleep. 
amazing. Don't we eat the bread of sorrow many times? You are, when you know the many struggles you make in life, to eat that bread that you eat, then you can know that it's really a bread of sorrow most of the time. But the Bible says that it is really in vain to do that. Because when God delights in you, he can provide for you even when you are asleep. And that text does not really say that you don't work. But it's actually talking about the ever presence of the Lord and the favor he can do to you. So think about this boy in the wilderness. Do you expect a wilderness without the ferocious animals, the hyenas, the lions? And you know, in the wilderness in the night, he must have presented himself a good meal for those carnivores. But God surrounded him. Hallelujah. How he spent a night without becoming a meal to a hungry hyena, that is God and his presence. We better start quoting the presence of God before the times of trouble falls on us. Because that presence can sustain you. That presence can keep you safe. At times, you realize that there are people that God will speak to when things are hard because they have been walking with him. Would you be that person? So God's presence with Jacob was confirmed first in Genesis 28, verse 12. Maybe we could have a look at it. Genesis 28, verse 12. So he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching the heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Now that's a confirmation of God's presence. Why? If you read that very the very last words ascending and descending so that tells you how the angels were moving but move they're not moving from up to down we're moving from down to up bottom up eh? <laughs> praise be to god yes it was a bottom up business and that tells you even when this boy was running away the angels were present. Are we together? They were present. Because where God is present, his guards must be present. And the guards that God sends to serve us are the angels. It is true. It is true. Anytime God is present, the angels are present. Hallelujah. Those are the bodyguards who watches over the people of God. So this was a boy. But because of the connection he had with God, he was that great. He had to be protected. Man, he carried the blessings of generations, of nations. Hallelujah. Look at that. Our connection with God makes us great. We carry blessings, not just for us. You see, when we are thinking from a human perspective, the blessing we look for are, the, are what we eat today, are possibly the money we have in our pockets. But as I have always said, blessings are not really in things. Blessings are in people. Are we together? When God is pleased with you, he allows his blessing in you. And when the blessing of God touches you, you change from being ordinary and you become great. Because God must transmit his blessing from you to generations. You must be guarded. Hallelujah. Jacob was guarded. 
So, in verse 15, maybe we could look, we could have verse 15 on screen. I am with you. Oh, before I come to verse 15, where I had read verse 12. Can we look at verse 12 again and we go a little ahead of verse 12? Just let's go a little ahead of that. Okay. So there above at the lander, at the top of the lander, there above stood the Lord. So at the top of the lander where the angels were ascending and descending, there stood the Lord. And these are the words he said to Jacob. I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and God of Isaac. Okay, so you can see who is standing at the top. And that qualifies God's presence. That's why the angels are going up and down because they have to deliver what God has. Amen. Could that be why Jesus said, as you pray, pray this, may your kingdom come. Your will be done on as it is in. So Jesus was teaching us to connect with the presence of the Father. Because when there is that presence, there is a ladder that connects you. May your kingdom come. Now that's exactly what was happening to to Jacob. So now, let me move now to verse 15. Give me verse 15. So, behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Behold, I am with you. Not I will, I I am. People of God, when we are walking with God, He's not He's not like I will. He's already there. Amen. If you're walking with God, it's not what will happen, it is what is happening. And, and for me, those are assuring words when He says, I am with you. So if I'm walking with Him, I don't have to doubt His presence. There comes a time we wonder, where is God? He is with you. Amen. I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. Now, do you know where, the, where Jacob went after that? He went to his, to his uncle's Laban. Laban was not a good guy to him. You all know that. Yes. He, 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 he made him like a slave. And almost even when he was leaving, he wanted this boy, his, this, he was a man now, he wanted this man to go empty-hearted. He was not just. So when God says, I will be with you, he's telling you, I know you will go through trouble, but I will be with you. That's what Psalm 46 says, isn't it? He is an ever-present help in trouble. Buona sifiwe. So even in trouble, he is with you. Isaiah 43 would have something similar because it says that when you are walking through fire, I will be with you. You will not be burnt. Amen? Now that is what the presence of God is like. And I'm, I could be talking today to someone who is trembling and wondering where is God. As long as you are walking with the Lord, is with you. As long as you are walking in him, as long as you are consorting his word, the Lord is with you. And he has already said what he will do for you. That fire is not going to consume you. It will refine you. Praise the Lord. It will refine you. Stay put. Be still in the presence of God. That fire will refine you. And that is exactly what he's telling Jacob. I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. What is it that he spoke to him? Okay, verse 13 uh, is one of what he spoke. And it says, 
I will give uh, I will give you what? I will give you I will give you land. He promised him where you are lying right now. That land I will give it to your descendants. I will give it to your descendants. For me, that's amazing because uh, when the Israelites came to occupy this land, it was not a no man's land. It was occupied. So there were people, and very strong people. You remember the spies who were sent to see who lives in that land, and they say, we saw giants. The people who lived there were really giants. It was not a Norman, Norman's land. But please take note. In as much as it was not a Norman, Norman's land, it had been occupied. The real owner of that land was pleased transfer it to Jacob. Hallelujah. He was pleased to transfer it to Jacob. God can transfer anything to you when he is pleased to be you. He's the owner of blessings. And when he is not pleased with you, he can transfer it from you to another person. Fear God. Hello? Just imagine all that you have what we are calling the bread of sorrow. <laughs> you have worked for it. And then God decides to transfer it to the next person. Fear that God. Fear him so much. And love him. And worship him. He can transfer it to someone else. Now, number two. He, uh, um, he spoke to him that your descendants, that's verse 14, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. Is it not a beautiful blessing? You know, this goes beyond just the children that uh, he will give back, the, the, the sons and daughters. It goes beyond that. It goes to descendants. It goes to descendants. You realize, all along, maybe like from Abraham, Abraham Abraham had brothers, but he's the only one that God blessed. Isaac. Isaac had a brother, isn't it? Ishmael. You remember that? But it's Isaac who was blessed. Jacob had a brother called Esau. It is Jacob who was blessed. But now what God is telling Jacob, now in your case, the descendant of Jacob will be blessed. Isn't that nice? When we realize that our descendants are blessed. And not just that, he will also bless the nation with a blessing. And that is the number three now. Uh, the number three, let me read, read it. And you, and you and your seed, you and your seed, and all families of the earth will be blessed. So God is saying, until I have fulfilled that I will not leave you that means I'm not going to leave you because God is ever in the blessing in the business of blessing the families of earth hallelujah now having said that I would like to just focus on Psalm 46 again verse 7 just that one verse, that verse 7 says, maybe we could read together. The Lord Almighty, the God of Jacob, is our fortress. So keep that verse there. Now, at times people wonder, and at times people fight, and at times keep, people keep on wondering, why do we keep on talking about God of Jacob and not God of wherever? It is because God was pleased with Jacob and his seed. I will bless all the families of the earth because of him. So that God, when he's with us, the, our God, the God of Jacob, when he's with us, we are blessed. Are we together? We are blessed. We are blessed. God is ever present. I want to give... Uh, I want to give a, 
Is it a story or what? I don't know. But something I have said again and again. So this young pastor got ill. And so he was um, he was admitted in the hospital. And right there, things were not looking up. And uh, in one of the nights, this pastor is in serious cough, very serious cough. So cough that's, you know, he's not able even to, to be in the bed. He goes flat on the floor, coughing, then back to the, to the bell, calling the doctor, pressing the bell calling the nurses in the night. But no one is coming. Maybe uh, uh, the same question I was, I was asking. Who is present? No one is coming. So this young pastor thinks, I'm going to die. So he calls the wife. But will the wife even help, her in the, help him in the night? No. Oh, he calls the elders. You guys, come and get me out of here. Are people discharged in the night? You cannot. You cannot transfer them in the night. So what will possibly happen if no help is coming? He can either die or I don't know, isn't it? Then it so happens that this pastor falls asleep. And when he falls asleep, then a dream comes and he sees himself Walking on a plank, a plank, a piece of wood, right? Uh, those of you who know uh, the village life then, when there is no bridge, you walked on a plank, eh? So he walks on a plank, but it's unstable. So the fear of falling. But then right down there, there is no river. Actually, it's completely dry, but there are huge dogs, maybe German shepherds, I understand they are the huge ones. And each of them are jumping, trying to get the best of this meat. You understand? And the young pastor is so fearful. But then there is a soldier pushing each of these dogs, just protecting this one young pastor. And it is a hard task. But this soldier must still do it. The young pastor crosses over to the other side. And then he, he hears a voice. You called everyone else, but you didn't call me. And he sees the words written, Jesus Christ. Okay? Ah, he cries. He prays. He repents. And he sleeps. Then come down, the doctor goes around. So calling this pastor by name. You are soldiers who are very few. Then the young pastor, instead of listening, the same words, he remembers the soldier who was fighting in the night. You remember the soldier I talked about? Then he's looking blankly at the doctor. What are you talking about? Why are you in the dream? And so the doctor is like, hey, you mean you don't know who soldiers are? And he says, they are white blood cells. There were so few, but I'm surprised they have been just boosted. And the young pastor the following day is, out of, is actually out of hospital. Isn't that wonderful? Now that pastor is a person speaking to you right now. Yes. That was 2014? Exactly. So, who is present? Who is present? Who is present? Some of these things have taught me so much. One day I will die. I know that is not very present for Christine. 
But one day I will, I will die. But I have promised God, even when I will be dying, I want to still keep knowing that you are present. Because at that time, I, I came back, isn't it? So when I will be dying, I still want to be conscious that God is present. Am I speaking to someone who is present? Unfading presence. I preach God that I have walked with. I preach, I preach God that I have had. I preach God who have literally come through for me. I preach God that I can never doubt about his presence. So, I want to give you the parallels of this from Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Because in that text of Matthew 28, 16 to 20, we have the disciples of Jesus distraught, very worried. Jesus had, had actually been killed, right? So he had resurrected, but they still felt alone. In this particular text, they felt alone and isolated. They were in solitude. Just the same way Jacob felt alone when he was escape, escaping from a dysfunctional family. Dysfunctional because his brother wanted to kill him. Things were not holding. He was running away. So these disciples were also isolating from a dysfunctional family of the Jews. They felt discouraged. They felt hated. They felt left alone. That's a parallel. But then Jesus comes and tells them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Hallelujah. And the parallel to that is where God comes to Jacob in a dream and the angels are ascending and descending and at the very top there God stood. That is authority. Hallelujah. Walking with God is walking under authority. Are we together? When you walk with God, you are sheltered, you are covered by heavenly authority. So Jesus is saying, all authority has in heaven and earth have been given to me. And therefore he tells them, go make disciples under that authority. So Jacob is blessed to go. He's blessed to go so that he will make a family and that family, God will make it blessed. And through that family, all nations of the earth are also blessed. When we walk with the Lord, we walk under authority. But let me tell us, you can never misuse God's authority. Because God's authority is about going and doing for him. Are we together? So his unfailing presence is not for idlers. You must not be idle. You must go out for God, people of God. Go out for him. Amen? Now, when he tells the disciples, go make disciples, is it not equivalent to what God is telling Jacob? You and your seed and all families of the earth will be blessed. Because once we subject ourselves to be disciples of God, we subject ourselves to God's blessings. Under the authority of God. And then Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the age, end of the age. Take note of the word I am, not I will. When you are under the authority, things happen every moment. I am. Not I will. Are we together? Not I will. I am. Um, and equivalent of what God told Jacob. 
I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The economy may be hard to, maybe to some of us, maybe to all of us. But I am with you. I am with you as long as you are under my authority. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something very interesting. I don't like saying much of what God speaks to me personally. Because at times people may think you are not normal. <laughs> but one of a few months ago I, I, I came and called my clergy, Reverend Frida, Reverend Laban. And I told them, you know, I have, this, I have this dream and we have to pray about it. I have just seen my pay slip so much sliced and the person I saw there is a government. That's what I told them. I told them, guys, this has scared me through the night because if they slash my salary, well, how do I live? And it did take long until I had these issues of what are they about? When it came in the, re in the reality, I stopped worrying and I said, God in whose authority I'm under has seen it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me tell you, people of God, nothing happens without God's involvement. So don't even complain about the government. The government has to do its work. Are we together? But there is an authority that makes things happen. Walk under that authority. It will be well. Hallelujah. It will be well. And that's why I'm asking whose presence, who is present? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is present? You're in business, they will come for you, isn't it? Yes. They are trained to get that taxation. They will surely come for it. And it's a good thing if they don't misuse it. It will grow the economy, isn't it? But in that moment, you'll be asking, who is present? Don't be so discouraged to taking life, to taking your life. If you take it, some will be under the authority of God and they will go through. Hallelujah. Be under the authority of God. He's present with you. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.